Okay, today we uh, have a small discussion of spleen and liver. We've put the spleen back in its real place so that you can uh, imagine its position. This is the position of the spleen. So you uh, actually, I don't know if they have uh, cut the, uh, you know, some of the ribs because the spleen normally lies along uh, but, you know, from the ninth to the eleventh ribs. Okay, this is the spleen. So now if you take it out, <coughs> Here we can see, this is, okay, it's like this. This is the, uh, and the original orientation of the spleen inside the body. Here we can see that this is the interior surface. It has notches in it. The most important is the splenic notch. You can see this is the splenic notch. You can separate it. Okay, splenic notch. Uh, uh, of course, this is the outer surface that lies under cover of the diaphragm. So this is the diaphragmatic impression or surface of the spleen. If you go to its inner surface for the other impressions, this is the impression of the stomach, gastric impression or gastric surface of the spleen. Okay, uh, for your orientation, this is the original position. If we reflect it like this, we have the gastric impression here. Below it, this is the renal impression. So, if we could see the kidneys, then this would lie on the upper surface of the kidneys and the, possibly the suprarenal glands. So it's the renal surface or impression of the spleen. Again, this is the original aspect. We take it like this, this is the renal impression. And here, the splenic flexure of colon, or the uh, left colic flexure. Okay. The, this is the region of the hilum of the spleen. We can see the two ligaments. This is the gastrosplenic ligament. This one. It's, it contains the tributaries of the splenic vein. These small branches or tributaries. Below it, we have the splenorenal. We said this is the renal impression, so remember it like this. This is the gastric impression. This is the gastric impression, so you have the gastrosplenic ligament. This is the renal impression, so you have the splenorenal ligament. Okay? Alright. And in the uh, splenorenal ligament, you have the branches of the splenic artery. You have... Okay, it would be better. Okay? In the uh, splenorenal ligament, you have the branches of the splenic artery. Okay, branches of the splenic artery. You can see them. This is basically what is important about the spleen. Then you have the liver. Okay, uh, so this is the real liver, or the cadaver. As we can see, this is the normal orientation. We have the right lobe of the liver. As we also explained in the samples, we said the liver has anatomical lobes, the right anatomical lobe of the liver and the left anatomical lobe. They are separated by the falciform ligaments. Okay? Right lobe, left lobe. And your right lobe, and left lobe. Okay, the falciform ligament is the remnant of the ventral mesentery. In the lower margin of the uh, falciform ligament, we can see what? The ligamentum teres. Here it is. It's just the ligamentum teres. Uh, if you could... Okay. This is the ligamentum teres. All right, remnant of the umbilical vein, left umbilical vein. Okay, if we go to the visceral surface of the liver, eh, here we forgot some of the uh, some things on the uh, on the samples. So here we could see them, uh, we can see them better. Uh, again, this is the, the left anatomical lobe of the liver. This is the right anatomical lobe. Again, they are separated. Here, we have the fissure for the ligaments and teres. This is it. If we can reflect it, we may see the ligament itself. Oh, yes, this is it. This is the ligament. It goes up. It's just the ligament. Okay, wait a second. This is the ligament and teres. Oh. All right. It goes up in this fissure. Oh, I see. No, no. Not we said this is, uh, here we saw the ligamentum teres, as you can see. Yes, this is the ligamentum teres. 
the color is different, you can recognize it, okay? Yes, here it is. Not the yellow part. Yes. All right. Uh, the ligament anterior goes up in its fissure along the visceral surface of the liver. So here up, we have the, the, the ligament and venosum, or any remnant of presence. It's supposed to lie here, the ligament and venosum, remnant of the ductus venosus. So the fissure, uh, or the line going along the fissure of the uh, ligament and venosum and the fissure of the ligament anterior separates the anatomical right and anatomical left lobes of the liver. Okay. The functional lobes of the liver. The right lobe of the liver also includes a caudate lobe. Here, this is very important, okay? This is the caudate lobe. For orientation, we said this is the actual orientation of the liver. We're going to its visceral surface, okay? This one, higher up, it's the caudate lobe. You can recognize it by this small process. If you have the pointer here, then you, this is the caudate process, okay? From the caudate to the right lobe. Down here, next to the gallbladder, we have the co uh, quadrate lobe, okay? This one, quadrate lobe. All right. The functional lobes of the liver, the left functional lobe of the liver is the left anatomical lobe, the caudate lobe, and the quadrate lobe. So like this, this is the functional left lobe. The functional right lobe is the remaining of the right lobe, the anatomical right lobe. So we can say, although it's not very clear here, it was more clear in the samples, the line separating them is along the line or, or the fissure of the inferior vena cava and the fossa of the gallbladder. To the right we have the right uh, functional lobe and to the left we have the left functional lobe. And by the way, this is the inferior vena cava. Okay? This is the gallbladder. You can see it. Uh, this is the fundus. We go to the ventral aspect. We can see the fundus, as we mentioned uh, on the samples, it passes through the transpyloric plane. We go back again. This is the body. And here is the neck of the gallbladder, this region. It leads to the cystic duct. We can separate the cystic duct here. Give a second. Yes, this, you can see this is the cystic duct. Because here we have the common bile duct. You can see this, this part, it's just the common bile duct formed by fusion of the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct from beneath. If we reflect the common bile duct, the larger, more median one is the portal vein, here. And to the left of it, we have the hepatic artery, here. These are very small structures, you have to... Yani, in order to remember them, the one, you know, you have uh, like three vessels, like three vessels. The one near to the gallbladder, this is the common bile duct, okay? The one in the center which is larger is the portal vein, and the one that is remaining here, this is the hepatic artery, okay? All right, and uh, this is the region of the porta hepatis, by the way. Uh, if we go to the impressions, uh, here we have the esophagus coming in, the region here, esophagus comes. So you have the gastric uh, surface or impression of the stomach here. Then you have the first and second parts of the duodenum. Then if you go further, the renal and suprarenal glands and the suprarenal gland and the kidney, their impression here. And finally down here we have the colon and the hepatic flexure of the colon, okay? I don't know if there's another structure here. I don't think so. I'm not, I don't remember. Okay. And uh, for the ligaments, again, a few points remaining. This is the falciform ligament, as we said. In its low margin, it contains the ligament teres here. Very obvious. If you go up, it divides. This is the falciform ligament. We're going up. Here, on the right, or on the left, sorry, on the left, it joins, yani, it forms the upper surface of the left triangular ligament, or upper limb of the left triangular ligament. 
here's the remaining of it it's like this you know thin line if you go like this this is the triangular ligament left and on the right it goes as the coronary ligament and later forms the right triangular ligament you can see this is the lower half or limb of the right triangular ligament this is the upper part so the area between them is the bare area of the liver as we said the limb from this aspect goes to the posterior mediastinal nodes for your orientation this is the liver if we go to the posterior aspect this is the bare area between what the two parts of the right triangular ligament